After the announcement of a new fruit basket happening, I, the ever curious person I am, decided to hop on the Furuba bandwagon, and I started watching this new season 1, which promises to be a full adaptation of the manga's 136 chapters. And if you, after watching this video, want a complete breakdown of every single episode, head on over to my Bento channel, where me and Rising Sun Reviews discussed each episode every single week as they aired. And remember to give this video a like, and comment on your thoughts on the show, as this is kinda where YouTube is at right now. Sadly, doing these things determines my worth on the platform, so every bit helps. After her mother is killed in a tragic accident, Toru Honda, not wanting to be a burden, decides to pitch a tent in a forest while going to school and working a job to support herself. But she discovers that the forest she's in is owned by Shigure Soma, who then invites her to live with them. The Somas are a clan, and they have one secret. When hugged by the opposite sex, they turn into animals of the Zodiac. And after accidentally hugging Kyo, Yuki, and Shigure, they turn into a cat, rat, and dog, respectively. Now, she must help keep the Soma secret just that, a secret. But there is much more to this seemingly happy story about people turning to animals. Each Soma inflicted with this curse are broken people who have been ostracized and dealt a terrible hand in life. Will Toru be able to endure and help the Somas recover? This is Fruits Basket 2019, Season 1. Fruits Basket is based off the manga of the same name by Natsuki Takia, which published from 1998 to 2006. This is currently the second adaptation of the manga, with the first being released in 2001. This version features a more original take on the source material with notable differences, though the 2019 version aims to be multiple seasons and a complete adaptation of the story. And of course, it is handled by TMS Entertainment, who are the bane of my existence. Please do not block this video like you do with my other series, TMS. Anyways, you may know them best for such anime like Megalo Box, Relife, and the never-ending Detective Conan series. This anime is on Crunchyroll and Verb and is available dubbed with the complete and mostly original cast from the 2001 version on Funimation Now. Fruits Basket tells the story of people who have been broken by a curse. One of the common lines in this series is some variation of, I didn't want to be a burden to you. And that's a good place to start, with many of these characters, even Toru Honda. In many ways, this story is one about healing and growing as a person. Toru Honda inspires a lot of changes in many of these characters. She has something that they needed to awaken growth within them. This is the most satisfying part of every Fruits Basket episode. It's when Toru meets these people and we learn their backstories, and it shows, by the end, their growth. The first season really isn't about Toru, as it's really about everyone that surrounds her. This is of course also done to properly set up season 2, where there won't be much character introductions for these characters. It's really smart the way they set this up, and it shows they are willing to take their time with this series. This was the right choice, because without them taking their time with this season, we wouldn't get moments like in episode 3, where Toru talks to Kyo. I called this the plum scene, and it's honestly one of my favorite moments to this day, and it happened so early on in the series. The gist of the scene is basically about how a lot of people feel they are the white rice in a rice ball. They're not that special and they want to be like the others who are special, but they can't see themselves that they have plums inside of them, which makes them unique. The idea is that everyone has something that makes them desirable and unique, but we often don't notice that special thing that makes us us because we are always comparing and too busy to realize how special each and every one of us truly are. This is a beautiful scene which really sold me on Fruits Basket completely. For a series like this one, in episode 3 of all episodes to drop something like that on the viewers, it's quite impressive. This scene to me really set up who Toru in this season was going to be, which is someone who can see the Somas for who they truly are. This is why Toru works so well in this show and why she's so important. And honestly, this show makes you really think about yourself and others quite a bit. There were multiple times, just like in episode 3, where I compared what Toru was saying to my own life. I think that's the mark of a good show like this one, is if what the show is preaching can be related to everyday life. There was always a message in Fruits Basic to be read, and then bits and pieces of advice left throughout. I quite enjoy this a lot, as it's kinda cool when a show, especially an anime, has some really grounded messages in it. 
And what I also like about this anime is that no characters are the same in their experiences. Every character has their own perspective of what happened to them. An example of this is Momiji believing there are no memories worth losing. This is some pretty deep and meaningful comments from a boy who's just 15 years old. It shows Momiji has matured in age beyond his years due to his backstory, which I will leave you guys to experience. But now compare that to Ayame, who seems to be totally different. Ayame is more free spirit and seems to have uh, a lot of fun in more ways than one. And then to compare them to Kisa, who is also totally different from the others. Not every character really needs the intervention of Toru, and not every one of them has this gravely tragic backstory like Momiji. Fruits Basket has a deeply compelling story in just about every way, and that's because there's so much to look for in this series. Thanks to a couple of my subscribers, they pointed out that the series focuses a lot on mothers, and because of that should jokingly be referred to as Fruits Basket Motherhood, in reference to Full Metal Alchemist's second anime adaptation. And upon talking about this, we all sort of came to the conclusion that the show indeed does focus a lot on mothers. I believe in the whole series there are maybe two fathers in the show and the rest are all basically about mothers. I won't say much in this regard as to who these mothers are as that would be spoilers, but I will say there is quite a bit of thought put into a lot of aspects, some of which you may not even really notice immediately. Fruits Basket is multi-layered and very well written overall. As a person who went into this story not expecting to even enjoy it, I was completely blown away in a way I had never been before. Going from not thinking I'll like it to it being one of my favorite anime of the year is an incredible feat to say the least. For the characters of Fruits Basket, there simply isn't one review like mine that could do them justice. So I am going to do my best and cover the ones which I think are the most important and impactful in the series, and then just a general overview with examples for the rest of the characters if I can. So first off, we have to start with my girl, Toru Honda. One day, I want to make a whole video about this character and just gush about how awesome Toru is and how underrated she is. Toru is a girl who I want to be like. She's the perfect example of a person who doesn't let her struggles get her down or makes an excuse for herself. She's also far from perfect herself, and I think it's these two things in play which makes her character so great. For example, after her mother dies, instead of being a burden, she decides to move out into the woods and pitch a tent while in school. While I can kind of disagree with her reasoning here, but she goes even further and gets a job to support herself. The dedication from Toru and the willingness to do what she has to to ensure her survival is incredible. And when I see something like this, it inspires me to do better. Another example is in one of the later episodes is when she is met with a, uh, a tough choice. She decides to get a part-time job to get some extra money, cheerfully saying, swab, swab, part-time job. Toru is precious and amazing, and I love her, and she's just the absolute best. And there aren't many anime characters I'm this attached to, so I consider that a rarity. Next up with Yuki the Rat, who is the resident slob of this show, and he also has his own fan club. Yuki is another character that I really ended up enjoying quite a bit, and he's one of the more featured of the three outside of Toru, of course. He has a bit of a rivalry with Kyo, who tries to beat him, but Yuki always is able to get the upper hand on him. He's also frequently called a babe because of his feminine looks, and I mean, just look at him, he's a total babe, right? Because of this, there is a whole club, like I mentioned earlier, that's dedicated to him. He's one of the most popular students in school, but while that may be, he is extremely closed off from everyone. Due to deep trauma, Yuki has decided it's better to live life alone than with anybody else. It's a really lonely life for him, and it's one of those things that's not really covering much in the series as a whole right now, but it's something that it's incredibly important to his character later. The last of the big three is Kyo, who is one of my favorites for sure. He is incredible. His form is that he turns into the cat, and much like how you'd think a cat would act, Kyo is exactly like that. But there is more depth to him as well, as Kyo is very interesting character, which plays an important role in the show. I found myself really let down by Kyo during the series, as he wasn't featured all too much. And more often than not, he was Kagura's punching bag, which isn't a terrible thing, but it wasn't until the last part of the season did I feel Kyo finally really got a spotlight. Which is important to this show. Spotlight. Everyone, and I mean literally 
everyone gets their spotlight to shine. Some of the best episodes focus on Toru's friends, Uotani and Hana, which is sort of unexpected from my perspective, but I think it's great that Uo and Hana and all of the other characters get theirs. And that's one of Fruits Basket's strengths as well, because the series tells each of these characters' stories so well, and each in their own different and unique ways. As an example, Momiji is one of my all-time favorite characters in the series because of his backstory and his frequent and regular appearances. It feels like he's a character who has an actual life outside of the show because sometimes he'll just pop in for an episode, which is super cool. And that's the luxury of having such a huge cast. The character development doesn't ever end with just an episode focusing on them. Going back to Momiji, we get the sense that Momiji really is great friends with Toru because he's he's kind of always hanging out with her. It's other characters like Hiro, Ritsu, Shigure, Hatsuharu, the amazing Ayame, and even smaller characters, I guess literally as well, like Kisa, who brings out a different side of Toru. I could go on further and in more depth, but the gist is that every single character in Fruits Basket means something important to the plot and character progression. I haven't seen an anime like this one implement a cast this big and do it well with little to no errors at all. It's an incredible accomplishment on both the staff and the original creator to do something like this. And hey, even when the show is at its worst, it's better than a majority of the anime out there anyways. Episodes like the introduction of Kagura sees this character be kind of annoying and all around loud and bipolar. But if you just wait a bit, Kagura's episode becomes better with age as she sees development in those later episodes, which makes up for her sour introduction. I know this because I didn't like Kagura and initially said she was the worst character in Fruits Basket. And now my tune is changing with her character. I actually really like Kagura now. If you think that Fruits Basket will have trouble with its cast, better think again. The show is pretty much perfect in this regard. I love every single one of these characters right down to Meet Chen and Kisa, even Akito. They're all such awesome characters. TMS Entertainment returns once again with another great looking effort in Fruits Basket. This show was originally based off a 90s shoujo manga and comparing the designs here you can see just how far they've come over the last 20 years. Toru just looks so adorable. Yuki looks fantastic and Kyo as well. They're all looking amazing in this anime and it's not uncommon anime like this looks so great to begin with. It is a slice of life after all which means there are inherent strengths the series will have other other genres. An example of this are the facial expressions and backgrounds which look immaculate in this anime. These backgrounds I think go unnoticed but they are really well done and as you can tell from the details in the buildings and other areas that there was some work put into this to make it look this detailed. Another great thing about this show are the character designs which are awesome. This anime has a lot of their characters showing up in different outfits. This is most notable with Momiji who has the most notable outfit changes. But of course Toru has a lot as well who you will often see in different outfits and hairstyles all the time. This helps give the show's characters an extra bit of depth to them as they like to sometimes switch it up every now and again. But I find I like most of these character designs from Kagura's little cat backpack to IMA's silver hair. This anime has unique looking characters. This brings me to their animal transformations as well and I won't say much about them but they're pretty damn cute. Yuki's rat is hilariously adorable. Kyo's cat transformation as well is pretty great. Even even Kagura, who I like to call a moe boar, is one of my favorite animal transformations in the show. As for animations, I have to go and commend the show for some pretty great facial expressions and how they're animated. Toru, as an example, always a great example really, is always the most emotive. In a given scene she is in, she is often stealing the spotlight because her facial expressions are so lively and eye-catchy. Hana and Uo are another set of characters which also get that level of detail, and it's fantastic. Not every character is as emotive, but that also has to do with some of these characters' personalities. As an example, Hiro's emotions are basically scowling and deadpan, which, comparing that to Ritsu's, well, he's obviously much more emotive. In general, this show handles every character so well here, and characters like Kagura really stand out because she's one of the only characters that has these pseudo-action sequences. And on top of that, when she enters her cutesy, oh my gosh, I love you, Kyo mode, she's also animated very well here. TMS really did this show justice, and it's a very well-done show in this regard. Previously handling the music for Fate Apocrypha, Masayu Yokoyama was tasked with bringing the soundtrack to Fruits Basket, and I must admit, 
It wasn't a score I noticed all too well. I think this is the classic issue of the music not standing out enough rather than it being bad. Bad music is very easy to hear, but here I just kind of never noticed the score much and that's likely because I think that's what it was intended to do. Just be in the background to prop up the highly emotional sections of the show. And hey, that worked. And while I wouldn't run out and buy a copy of the OST anytime soon, I think in this regard, Yokoyama has succeeded with the score. Now this is an interesting dub, as practically the whole cast from the 2001 original anime dub returns. Voice actors like Laura Bailey return to the anime one more time to voice Toru Honda, and even Chris Sabat returns to voice Ayame. Lots of familiar voices in this dub return, and with newer additions like Trina Nishimura voicing Akito, there are some massive enhancements to the overall experience. Though, I must say, I was not used to the dub going into this. And this is weird for me to say this, especially since the anime features Laura Bailey, and you know she wasn't cheap. I just kinda got used to the sub here. It's the performances that really did it for me, and there was enough pauses in most of the scenes where I could focus on the animation perfectly fine. Though I will admit, after watching a few more episodes of the dub, I actually really like the dub, but I would say that I prefer the subs here the most. In closing, Fruits Basket 2019 seems to be what fans of the series for a long time have been craving for. A new adaptation that is faithful to the original while still implementing some changes, which sees improvements to the overall story and pacing. In my opinion, there is no other anime quite like Fruits Basket. On the outside, looking in, it looks like a pretty standard shoujo anime. But once you really sit down and experience it, it's so much more than it initially lets on. This isn't an anime you shouldn't write off as something it's not without watching it. This has serious potential to be one of the greatest anime of all time if the next couple of seasons that start in 2020 are just as if not better than this first season. If you're asking for a recommendation, this is an anime you absolutely must watch. It's simply one of the best anime to air this year with nothing really coming close outside of The Promised Neverland and a couple other mentions. So this finally ends my journey with Fruits Basket for Season 1. It isn't until 2020, which I'll be talking more about Fruits Basket on my second channel, Bento, where me and Rising Sun will be returning with the Fruits Basket podcast to talk about the series weekly again. And I must say, I am really excited, and I appreciate everyone who found me through Fruits Basket. I want to say that because I think it's important, and you guys, seriously, made me kind of get a second wind on the Bento channel and <laughs> kind of on YouTube in general. I catch those every now and again, and this time, oddly enough, it wasn't me finding some new way to make a video or get getting excited about some new technique I learned. It was through just a bunch of the people that I met. You guys made me more passionate. Um, and you guys made me really enjoy Fruits Basket. You guys uh, were great. So I appreciate everyone who found me through, through Fruits Basket. And if you enjoy this video, as always, make sure to like, um, comment. Those, of course, really help me out. And if you see some of these videos you may enjoy, click on them and subscribe and ring the bell, especially ring the bell, that's very important. And know that I have a Patreon, where on the $1 tier and above, you get access to literally everything. There, there's gonna be a, a bunch of changes in the future to Patreon, so look out for that, and I'll see you guys later. Bye bye